Getting below market value properties is what every property investor dreams of doing. But what do you have to do to get a property 20% below its true market worth? Well, it's not as simple as walking into an estate agent and asking what discounts and deals that they've got available, because it's likely that the estate agents will laugh you out of the shop as quickly and as confidently as you walked into it. In this video, we're going to cover what BMV or below market value actually is, how it works and how to find BMV properties. Some people firmly believe BMV is a bit of a, an imaginary thing. A property is worth what it's worth, right? That's strictly true, but also you're not going to get a beautiful family home that's perfectly decorated for a 20% discount. However, if you imagine a row of three terraced houses on a street, the first one sold for 100K in a great condition, modern, the second sold for 98K in a very similar condition, and then think about the third, a very old avocado bathtub, floral carpets, all of the lot. And it's that third one that has the potential because it needs a refurbishment to bring it up to a modern standard, which means you have more bargaining power and ability when making an offer on the property. To bring this to life a little bit more, if you know that that property needs about 20K spending on it to cosmetically improve everything, maybe redo the electrics, put in a new boiler, then you can use this to buy the property for an amount lower than the 100K average sold prices in that area, known as the gross development value. This does get a little bit harder when you factor in purchasing costs like broker fees, finance costs, stamp duty, legals. So let's call this 5K to cover all of those costs. This means that you know, upfront, you need about 25K just to buy the property and do it up, to either sell it on or rent it out as a BRR deal. So we know that the house has 100K gross development value or GDV, and it needs 25K spending on it through the purchase and the refurb. So our offer really needs to be lower than 75K to make any profit off of this whatsoever. Now, usually as property investors, we look for something around about 20% or above return on investment or ROI which is calculated by taking the profit and dividing it by the money invested. So we know that an offer of 70K would leave us with 5K profit after 25K of costs. So there's definitely better deals out there, but this is a realistic view of what we're seeing at the moment. It's not bad whatsoever. And speaking of things that aren't bad at all, smashing the like button. It's free to do, takes a second of your time and really helps out a budding YouTuber to conquer something harder than BMV properties, which is the almighty YouTube algorithm. So I thank you if you could do me a huge favor and smash the like button. And with that being said, let's continue. One key thing to really think about, especially in the current 2021 market where things are super, super hot, Auction properties that are unmortgageable are selling for GDV prices and each flip or BRR project has more than 15 offers for on-market deals. It's absolutely bonkers. You're just not going to find a juicy 30% return on investment deal when you have 15 people bidding on the same rundown property. And at times like these, it's okay to cut that RRI figure back a little bit. At the moment, I'm looking at a small refurb project and have cut my numbers to about 15% ROI, which for me is more important to get into a project at this stage and actually working on something rather than sat around as opportunity cost is also a thing in a rising market where missed time will cost you money. But of course that depends on your property plans. So with a current hot market, how do you find below market value BMV properties? Well, I think there are four major ways to do this, to avoid having to provide best and final offers with 15 people all in a bidding war on an on-market property, and it's all about finding a motivated seller. This is someone who needs to sell in a hurry or has a specific reason to get rid of the property. And it's in these scenarios where being a cash buyer or quick to move can really help them, which in turn helps you. So firstly, the main thing you can do is become trusted by estate agents. So this might seem obvious and you might have heard it before, but becoming an estate agent's best friend can really pay dividends here. You would be surprised at how many people talk the talk and ask estate agents for the best deals and how they've got 50K to work with. But unless you're actually viewing properties and making offers, they won't take you seriously. So if you stick to a particular area, you'll start to see the same agents time and time again at viewings, and they'll begin to recognize you. If you're always on time, no messing about and making solid offers on the property, it doesn't matter if the vendor rejects them or not, the agent will know that you're serious. And this is when they have a deal that lands on their desk or they need to get rid of a house quickly, you'll become one of those people that they can call to try and get the property moving as quickly as possible. Now, 
I didn't really get this or understand how to do it originally, and I thought it was all about the small talk, but since viewing and making lots of offers recently, that's where the substance is, which has meant that I've been getting calls from estate agents offering me last minute viewings on really, really good projects. And yes, it is on market stock, but if you can be one of the first people to get your foot in the door and make a solid offer that isn't too below market value, then you might get lucky and have that vendor who accepts the offer and then takes it off the market immediately, meaning you're not bidding against loads of other people. It's also a situation where the estate agent themselves may even recommend you if they know that you're serious versus another person who might even offer a little bit more but has the potential to flake out the deal. It's even better if you actually have an offer accepted and push a clean sale through for a house. They'll definitely be on the phone to you for the next deal and whatever lands on their desk because that estate agent, they know that you're serious and will go and offer and put through a really good process when buying the property. This is gonna put you leagues ahead of a lot of people who do unfortunately waste a lot of time with estate agents and they can spot that and smell it a mile off. If you do become that person they trust, they'll be calling you first rather than being amongst all of those other beginner property investors who ask for lots of viewings and they never even make any offers. A lot goes for showing up on time and being as responsive as possible, picking up the phone to the agents as soon as possible as they call, and if you miss the call, call them back as quickly as possible and it'll show that you're responsive, which is really good from a potential buyer's perspective, but also it shows you're serious and shows you're easy to get hold of if there were issues during the buying process. So, for example, if you did this, everybody's days end up being way more efficient because of it. Secondly, finding off-market deals. This is another great way to get B&B properties. The problem with going through estate agents is that you have loads of people all looking and because there's so much demand, you'll have bidding wars, people bumping up the prices and that's why it's so expensive. So if you can remove the competition, which means that you won't get into those bidding wars and therefore the prices won't go up, it's a classic supply and demand. If there's less demand, then in theory, you'll be able to get a better price as there isn't some numpty offering silly prices for the quality of a property. Now, when thinking about your marketing campaigns for this, you could choose leaflets and letters, that's what a lot of people do, and then get a distributor to send them out to an area of say 4,000 houses. Or you could go down the letter route. Now, there are loads of online services these days that will do this for you and it'll cost a few hundred pounds. So let's say that you send out letters or leaflets to 4,000 houses. You might get a few inquiries back of which one, roughly one, is expected to turn into an actual deal. But to get the 4,000 leaflets printed and distributed in an area, it might cost you, for example, 750 pounds. So that's not too bad. That might seem like a big upfront cost, but to source one deal, 750 pounds isn't that bad. But the more targeted you get with your campaign, you could bring that cost down by targeting specific houses that have real potential. And in my opinion, this is the best way to do it. If you can drive around your local area and find houses that are a little bit worse for wear, boarded up, or just generally look unloved, then this means that you're not sending out a leaflet or letters to loads of random houses where you've got a happy family living in a great house that doesn't need doing up and they have no intentions of moving because that's a rubbish low quality lead. And instead you're focusing on a house that actually is a really good potential property, meaning that you're more likely to get a BMV deal on it. To bring this to life, when I was viewing on market properties, I went to a street and I saw about five boarded up properties. Now, this means that I have a great opportunity to pull details for those five houses, find out who owns them, and send out very specific targeted letters to those five owners to see whether they'd like to sell their houses privately off the market. Now, you can download any freehold or leasehold information from the land registry for about three pound per title. And all of this means that you won't have to spend hundreds of pounds and instead for the sake of 15 pounds, you might actually get a really good deal out of this. And the more work and the more targeted you can get into it, the better your return on investment is going to be in getting those letters and leaflets out. Personally though, I'm not a massive fan of doing the whole direct-to-vendor stuff. I'm working a nine to five, I do a YouTube channel, so I'm very busy and don't have the time to do this, but I am forcing myself to spot more opportunities and just send out a few targeted letters to see if one ends up being at least a good conversation with an owner of a distressed house. Now, I've mentioned him a few times on the channel, but Justin Wilkins is doing great things in investing up in Liverpool, and he sent out just two letters and ended up getting a response from one of them, of which that ended up actually turning into a property deal that he has now bought. So this 50% success rate really goes to show how being super targeted can really, really pay off. That lead for a 25-ish percent return has meant that that's cost Justin no more than about 10 pounds. Now, this leads me on to number three, which is deal sourcing. Now, this particular strategy does come with some risk. The industry has been somewhat tarnished by a lot of rogue traders. And unfortunately, with the property guru training, they often flout deal sourcing as 
a great way to get into the property industry. And don't get me wrong, it's a great way to make some money when you're flogging deals for 3K a pop, but also they need to be good deals and the sources need to ensure that they're fully compliant with HMRC, money laundering, the ICO, the property ombudsman, professional indemnity insurance, as without these in place, they're not really operating compliantly, which means that if anything was to go wrong, if you're putting deposits down for houses and if it ends up being a bad deal, then you'll have no recourse to recoup those funds. You should also make sure that if you do work with a sourcer that not only do they hold all of the correct compliance and provide you with all the numbers and registration numbers to double check it on the official registers, but you should also ensure that if you're sending them any money, that this is to a client account. Now, this is a type of bank account that businesses can open to hold funds for clients. Now, this is used when you're undertaking the due diligence process on the source property to make sure it's all stacking up and that it's all legitimate. And if you wish to pull out, you can do so and they can return the money to you. And having this client account means that your money is treated separately from their business and they cannot touch it until you both agree to move forward. And of course, the account comes with loads of additional regulations and compliance, which will protect you and also protect them as well to make sure that they're handling client money properly. So if a deal sourcer asked me to pay money into their own company bank account, especially if it was through a faster payment, which offers no protection whatsoever, then the only thing I have is to trust that the person I'm sending the money to would send the money back in case of a bad deal. Otherwise, if they refuse to return the money, sometimes there's not much that you can actually do to get it back apart from taking them to court. You could contact the bank and then file a fraud complaint, but then they'd have to take an investigation and there's no guarantee that you'll get the money back. But all that aside, there are some good property deal sources out there and very legitimate companies that are professional, well-established, compliant, have a, an amazing track record and not associated with any property gurus. And they've got great deals. They've got their feet on the ground every day sourcing brilliant off-market properties and their Usual 3K fee is more than worth the savings and the return on investment you'll get on the property. So it's all about doing your due diligence there. I work a full-time nine to five, so it's hard to always go up north and spend days and days viewing properties that, especially in this market, end up being outbid pretty much every time anyway. Now, fourth is pre-auction offers. Now, this is last but no means least, and it's looking at auction properties. Now, back in the day, auctions were really the holy grail of getting a good deal, and supposedly they do still exist, but in today's hot market, I've been seeing auction houses celebrate their biggest ever auction days, most amount ever sold in a day, most ever bidders, which is all bad news if you're looking to get a bargain as a buyer, just like me and a property investor. Now, all of this means that there are lots of bidders and competition, meaning that they're bidding up the prices. And I have seen as well as lots of other people who've DM'd me on Instagram that properties requiring more than 30K refurbishments are selling for done up values, which is just baffling. With the auctions being online, you can't walk up to the winner in the room and ask them if they're an investor and what potential they saw in the property that you might have missed, which people used to do. If you then saw someone bid a massive, massive amount for a property, you could ask them what potential they saw and why did they bid that amount? Because they must have run the numbers on it. Well, most people at least run the numbers on it. So I can only wonder whether these people buying properties at done up value are somehow cash heavy owner occupiers who don't really care about return on investment or whether they're investors who are doing really bad due diligence and number crunching on the properties. So. A great little thing that you can do in most auction houses, they allow you to make pre-auction offers after you've seen the property. Now, don't go offering stupidly low amounts because they just won't accept it. But if you can offer a fair amount, still below true market value, but something that's respectable and the seller might entertain, if they think it's a solid offer, rather than waiting for the auction, they might just agree to that sale. And it's a great way to avoid all of the competition when you go to the live auction. And I've seen many established property investors do this and get some awesome projects. And for the sake of making an offer at a few thousand above the guide price of the fair market value, then that can still end up stacking way better than going to the actual auction and then getting stuck in a bidding war, which ends up going 20% above what it's worth and knocking out all of your profit altogether. So in today's hot market, it's hard. I completely get it and I'm in the exact same position, but there are ways that you can explore to reduce that competition and that's what it's all about. And that's where the best deals are to be had. So with that in mind, I hope you found this video useful. You can check out my others like this one on the top here, which is my day in the life of a property investor, or you can check out my 2021 buy to let hotspots in the UK packed full of data. So feel free to choose one of these videos and I will see you in the next video.